I'm going to pop open barn2.jpg from my work files folder. And here's what I'm going to do to, to get started with these new blur effects. I'm going to head to filter and then down to blur. We've already seen where these guys are hidden here. So we have field blur, iris blur, and tilt shift. So I'm going to start off with field blur. Go ahead and select this guy. Now this brings us into sort of a, uh, a new area inside Photoshop CS6. Notice the right hand side we have blur tools and blur effects. But more importantly, inside the main image window, we now have a single pin sitting in the center of our image. So in other words, what's happened here is the entire image is now blurred with this field blur. Now, what can I do with a field blur? Well, check this out. I'm going to create the illusion of depth inside my photograph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pin here and I'm going to move them off center. Maybe I'll move them over top of my barn, something like this. And then what I'll do is this fence post here in the foreground, I'm going to single click on him. And what that'll do is that'll create a second pin inside my image. Now notice around each pin, we have sort of this, this donut here. This donut actually controls the amount of blur that's being applied to that particular pin. So if I reduce down the amount of blur on this pin, now it looks like the fence post is in focus. And this second pin, if I go back and click on him, I could increase the amount of blur on this guy to make the barn look out of focus, give the illusion of depth here, right? Or perhaps what I want to do is reverse these two guys. So maybe I'll bring this blurred pin over top of the fence post, something like this. So now it looks like the barn's in focus and the fence post in the front is out of focus. And again, don't forget, you can always adjust the amount of blur that's being applied using this sort of this radial blur donut slider. Now, usually what I like to do though, is rather than rather than using the, the, the radial slider here on the pin itself, I prefer, and I've, I've discovered this recently, using the actual blur slider over on the right hand side. And that'll basically do the same thing. So you can grab your push pin there on your, on your image and then use the blur slider over on the right hand side, okay? For the longest time when I was starting to experiment with this new feature in CS6, I was using this radial slider and I, I discovered that I, or I, I kind of decided I didn't really like how it behaved and I find it much easier myself to use the, the slider over on the right hand side. Okay, I'm gonna cancel out of this guy. Just clicking on cancel there in the top right corner. So that was the field blur. I'm gonna head back to the filter menu, back down to blur and I'm gonna go with iris blur now. And what this will do is this will create an oval blur for me, something like this, right? And as you can see, we have a series of handles and, and circles and so on that we can use. You can basically grab these guys. The outermost circles on the outside edge of the oval will let me rotate the oval, okay? The inner circles here, if I grab and click and drag on these, that controls the feather for the blur. So the, the, the edge of the blur, if you will. Of course, I can grab on the pin itself and drag this guy around. So maybe I want to, once again, focus on the barn itself. And what I could do as well is I could grab the edge of the oval and drag this guy in to zero in on the object that I want to have in focus, for instance, right? By the way, there's a little diamond here as well. You can grab that guy and you can control the corner radius of your oval. Anything that falls inside this oval is going to remain, I guess you could say, in focus or or unblurred, and anything that falls outside of the oval is going to get that blur effect applied to them. So maybe something like this, right? Again, creating this illusion of depth. So once again, what I'll do, you can click on OK if you want to actually apply this to your image. I'm going to cancel out of this because there's one more guy that I want to show you here. And this is going to be our tilt shift effect. I'm going to go and pop into my open dialog box. And I'm going to go and grab a file called resizing. We saw this guy earlier. I'm going to pop this guy open. This is our, our road in northern Ontario here. And once again, I'm going to head to filter and this time down to blur. And I'm going to go with my tilt shift blur. 
Now what this guy will do is he'll apply a very common, very popular photographic effect called tilt shift. You may have heard of tilt shift photography. And as a matter of fact, you can even use tilt shift photography to create miniature effects using your photographs. Very cool stuff. But what I want to do in this case is I want to keep my my horizon where my road is going in focus that's what I want the the viewer of my photograph to focus on and I want the rest of the image to blur off okay so I position the pin there and then once again I have some resizing available to me I have these grab handles here so I could rotate this blur effect if I wanted to so maybe I'll rotate them just a little bit something like this I can grab the edge of the of the tilt shift controller something like that right now this area here is going to be the area that's in focus the next area out between the solid line and the dashed line that's what's called the the feather zone so this is where the 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 blur effect is going to fade off into the the outside area which is the actual area that's going to be blurred right so as you can see I have a feather zone on the top and on the bottom so I could do something like this. I could tighten in that focus area, maybe something like this, right? Or again, I could take that feather area and kind of have him fade off a little more gently, something like this, right? And then of course, over on the right-hand side, we have our blur slider so we can adjust the amount of blur that we want to apply to this guy. Go ahead and click on OK if you want to go and apply this to your actual image. And once we're done, once Photoshop is done rendering that effect, there we go. There's the tilt shift effect. So there you go. Three new blur effects inside Photoshop. Field blur, iris blur, and tilt shift. Very, very cool stuff. Have fun with these guys. I'm sure you're going to be experimenting with these guys quite a bit.